So, um, you know, that, that's kind of, that's, that's my, uh, that, that, that's my two cents on that. So my question to you, Dean, is, is as a wholesaler, where do you recommend somebody starts as a wholesaler? Uh, help me out with the question a little bit more. Like what, what like. So it, start, as a wholesaler, start, simply like, starting out as a new wholesaler, mm -hmm. what do you recommend? Where do you recommend? What areas do you recommend them that them starting out? What you know, reaching out. One, do you recommend them reaching out on market, and or off market? That's kind of one portion. And then two, do you recommend them doing inside Detroit or the suburbs? You know. Good. Uh, yeah. No. Thanks for the question. Um, let me take a little sidestep. And, uh, and and tell you a story that'll help with this, okay? Um, you know, I always say this, but like, why why did Jesus teach in parables? I don't know. Jesus taught in in stories, mm -hmm. so you would remember. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's think about this for a moment. Close your my your eyes and imagine this. I get these phone calls from my website, right? My 949-1224 number, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, do you buy houses in Detroit? Like this is, these are the regular phone calls I get. It's not just me, it's anybody who has pay-per-click. Yep. You know who's calling. Hey, do you buy houses in Detroit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you got? Talk to me, right? Mm -hmm. Are you the person on title? No, I've got this property under contract. I'm gonna, like, it's the way yep. it goes most of the time. And I'm not knocking these people, but what right. I'm telling you is that there's a uh, there's a, a strategy that these people are following that is uh, it's not producing fruit. Mm -hmm. okay? So now you got these people that have uh, like it, we had a joke about this on the way back from Nashville. Um, one guy, uh, Mike Aziz, you know, I'm in the community. Yep. I'm oh yeah. He's like, I get the phone call from this house. that has been on the market for like 390 days, right? <laughs> it's on the market, on market properties. I'm not saying don't go after on market properties. If you do, you need to make it, you need to have a good genuine conversation with these people. Okay. And yep. know what you're doing because you're dealing with agents on the other end of the line. Understand that. And if you come at me like you know you say you want to put my house under contract okay well let's bring your deposit you know bring your deposit let's get an actual i'm not gonna let you wholesale that thing i'm not gonna let you I'm not gonna go get your real estate license you want to do this stuff mm -hmm. right you want to be a buyer's agent which is effectively what you're doing you want to secure property then go ahead and you know and i'll settle down here but but understand that these people are calling number one they don't know how to analyze the deal. They're excited to get a contract, but but this 390 day house is like on the market for ninety thousand dollars, and the guy's got it under contract for eighty five. Oh, I'll give you eighty five. Seller's agent. Seller's agent's like, huh? Look at this schmuck. You know, eighty five thousand it is. Now this guy calls us, or calls Mike in this example. And he's like, oh yeah, it's a great house, and you know, uh, just needs a little bit. He's got all the pictures that are on the on you know Zillow. Yeah, that's what he's using as a, a comp tool, and you know, he sends him on over, or you know, he tells him a little bit about the property, and uh, tells Mike that he can get himself a real good deal at ninety thousand dollars, which is exactly the price it's at on the MLS. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, now they're, I'm not naming names, right? Yeah, no, no, I'm not gonna badmouth anybody. But there's people out there that are teaching this mm -hmm. and they're producing students that are coming into our market and, and producing junk. Yes. Okay, you're going on, on market? Okay, understand that that market is like, there's a lot of people doing it right now, okay? Yep. We write 200 letter of intents a month at least, okay? That means that I'm sending you an agent that has a house on the market for over 30 days or whatever it is, whatever my you know, flavor of the week is, 30 or 40 days, if you're on the market, you're getting a letter of intent from us. It says we'll buy it land contract, we'll buy it, you know, seller finance, or we'll buy it cash. 
What do you want to do, Mr. Seller? Okay, so we get responses from that. It's about the same as sending direct mail, I'll be honest with you. Yep. Now there's ways that you can increase that mm -hmm. frequency, that callback frequency. You can reach out to them, send them a text. You know, find, this is a relationship business, which boils right back to the original reason why we're even doing this call. It's yes. Because this is a community. One All right? Yep. You understand that you can't just walk in and just call it the way it is, you know, without building a relationship with these sellers. Mm -hmm. So, so ask, refresh the question one more time for the audience, because you're asking about how do we get started, right? Yeah. So wholesalers, where do you recommend they start? You know, one was, uh, one, first part was off market or on market and Detroit or suburbs. Well, I can tell you that if I could find a good, legitimate deal in the suburbs right now, I'd scoop it up. Yep. But if I can find a good, legitimate deal, like here's, here's what's coming out of Detroit right now. My web lead line just called and it's got a tenant that's paying $400 a month and they want like 15 grand for this house. And it's in Highland Park, right? Right. Like, I, I don't... I don't know that I want that house. It's probably not right. my buy box. Right. All right. But will I put it under contract and then try to sell it to somebody else? You go through the RIA site right now, the mm -hmm. listed properties. How many of them are, are Detroit? Quite a bit. Sure. Yeah. Like overwhelming majority, at least 90%. Yeah. Probably. Understand that if, if you if you feel good just to get a contract, don't fake yourself out. That's what I'm saying. Don't fake yourself out. If you're to put in the work, go out to the suburbs, go out to the places, drive for dollars. Yes. Okay. Go to the deal machine app. Go to this new one called Backflip. There's new they, like they're just getting started. Um, but but try out Backflip app, and you know for real estate investors, they have some financing tags on there as well. Um, but as you're as you're going through neighborhoods find a distressed property find a property that maybe you know car has it, it, cars on blocks the driveway isn't shoveled the grass isn't cut you're going to sign the distress broken out windows bad roof okay a bad roof with a tarp they get oh, extra yeah. bonus points for that one you know why because they got up there they already told you once that they you know number one the, the roof is bad Mm -hmm. Right, so that's indicator number one. They couldn't afford to replace it, otherwise, it would be replaced. I and mean, this stands the reason, right? Yep, but then when the tarp is over it, like hey, there's our attempt to fix it, but it's a key indicator that you probably don't have the money to. I mean, sure, there's exceptions to everything, but yeah, like, hey, it's got a tarp that's getting a letter from me. I'm gonna do that, right? Go we'll knock on the door if you have to. Bandit signs, no, oh, yes, yeah. from our bandit signs. I got 500 or excuse me um i pay i pay 500 bucks for 100 signs installed out in the community and you know what's a real kicker mm -hmm. is i had signs out in the dearborn heights area that were uh, they're out there yellow signs you guys driving up and down uh, warren road yep. see my signs um i didn't start to get i got a huge influx of calls once the snow hit the big snowstorm then it's like the yellow stood out from the. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, let's do it, man. Yeah. But place those bandit signs within the neighborhoods. Yep. Not just the busy intersections, but inside the neighborhoods where mm -hmm. people see them. Now, keep in mind, I got to add to that a caveat. What is it? Check the city regulations and what happens. Now, not all, all the cities, like if you try to do that in Sterling Heights, or like some of the higher end in Farmington Hills and higher end neighborhoods, they're they're gonna rip those down or they're gonna try to try to come after you for and find you for those signs. Yeah, once you yeah. spend that money for those signs, consider them gone. Exactly. Yeah, and the inspectors will call you and they'll let you know which ones uh, which cities are yeah. not okay. So I don't know. I'm not you know. But but don't don't let that stop you. That's the key thing here trial and error okay you spend a little bit of money on, on marketing see what happens if it works great put more money into it try something else 
If it works, put more money into it. If it doesn't, move on to the next thing. Mm. You know, key. I mean, it's it's just a trial and error. I would okay. I would challenge that. I would challenge that statement. So you you got to look at it and prove it over time. Mail works over time. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in 2012 when I started in the business. Literally, I could spend three hundred dollars on my yellow letters, my handwritten yeah. yellow letters, and I literally it got a ten percent plus response rate. Yeah. So for three hundred letters, mm -hmm. I would get. I remember this one uh, statistic: twenty-three calls. Yeah. But then my inability to close, which is the reason why you need to stay educated and even partner up with somebody who is a, a, a able-bodied closer. I got one deal out of that one deal out of that three hundred dollars which sounds really really good and i'd love to do that nowadays but there was 23 leads and i know i left money on the table because yeah. i didn't know how to to structure anything creatively if it didn't fit my box of 70 percent minus repair yeah forgot now, about it now I, I have a caveat i'm not sitting here saying try try one strategy and then if it if it doesn't work go to a different strategy mm. what i'm saying is is try one strategy and try multiples of that strategy okay what i mean by that is is you brought up mailers okay great let's do this trial section on mailers okay on this paper okay that's not working let's try a different a avenue of reaching out to them we're still doing mailers but we're flipping it up where we're trying to make the paper a little bit better or we're going to postcards instead of full out letters or however there's umpteen in every different category there's umpteen amount of different things you can do to try you know mm -hmm. not everything's going to work for you and you may come say okay this is not working and then a year later, want to come back to it and try it again with your newfound knowledge of what you've learned over that year. Yep. You know, it's always changing. So, most definitely. Um, I always recommend this. Th this is my aspect for wholesalers. And correct me if I'm wrong. If wh whatever you think, Dean, let me know because you know you're you're a realtor, so I, I you recommend you know. Um, if you are going for something that's on market and you're trying to wholesale it, you need to do your numbers correctly. So you have your ARV and even if you say, oh yeah, my ARV is, uh, you know, we'll go 200,000. Okay. 70% of that is, uh, 140. you know, about 140. I, I think it's going to be about 40 grand worth of work. We'll, we'll get under contract for a hundred grand. Okay. And then we'll try to sell it for 110 or no, sorry. We'll get under contract for 90 grand. We'll try to sell it for a hundred. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a third piece that you have to look at. And now the people that are, that you, like you said, that are training, Oh, if it, as long as it works your numbers, then it shouldn't matter, right? No. Okay. The buyers here are savvy. They will look on the MLS. Okay. They still need to feel like they get a deal. Okay. It's a it's still a human being on the other mm -hmm. side. Okay. They still need to feel like they get a deal. And so essentially what's going to happen is say it's on, you got locked up for 90, you're trying to sell it for a hundred, but the house is, is literally on the market for, we'll say 105,000. Okay. That is not a deal. It's been on the market for 90 plus days. Okay. There's a reason for that. Okay. Now, now you have to go back and you have to look at your renovation costs. Are you off on your renovation costs? All right. Is there some sort of structural foundation that is wrong? The reason why they're not getting multiple offers or they're not getting offers. 
okay you have to look at all of that but then you have to look at okay now if it's on market for 105 and i'm sitting here trying to sell it for 75 or say 70 that's a different story 100 mm percent -hmm. okay you i would definitely do that all day long but you have to look at that that's that's your other aspect you have to look at you have to make sure that the buyer makes sure he thinks he's getting a deal mm -hmm. 